Our next speaker is an equity educator, drag producer, and trans activist. He's also a husband and late 90s dance enthusiast that loves walking the dog when not working or at the gym. Please welcome James Demers. Oh boy. When I was deciding what to talk about tonight and thinking about closure, I immediately thought of death. But I'm an optimist, and so I started thinking about what is it that gives life meaning? What about when it ends? What can we learn from that moment? These are both me. In 2005, at my first Pride event, it rained all day until the two hours where the sun came out. There were 1,800 people at Pride. And then in 2018, at Princess Island Park with 100,000 people gathered in the sun. 2018 is the first year I was fitted for a bulletproof vest. Some things change and some things remain the same. This is Harvey Milk. He was born in 1930 in New York to Jewish parents. He loved the opera and classical music. And after serving in the Navy and working on Wall Street, shocking no one, he came out and moved to San Francisco. This is the Castro neighborhood in 1972. It was a thriving hub of queer culture and self-discovery. And the Parkside Continental, which opened in Calgary in 1973 at 13th and 4th. It was a sanctuary for the growing gay community and even hosted Eartha Kitt for an entire week once. She drank a lot of champagne. <laughs> the Castro was and still is one of the biggest gathering points for LGBT people and culture in North America. It's been a hub for activism that brings together different causes long before the term intersectionality was coined by Kimberly Crenshaw. Harvey opened his campaign office in a little building called Castro Camera. Harvey Milk ran for office three times before winning a seat at the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. His campaigns focused on things like affordable housing, public access, dog poop, long story, and queer rights. He inspired LGBT communities across the world with his speeches about hope, and coming out. This is Gilbert Baker. In 1979, in the spring, Harvey Milk asked him to make a new symbol for the gay community. Previously, the queer community had been using the pink triangle, a symbol created by the Nazis and applied to gay men. The rainbow flag would fly for the first time in June of this year. Meet our villains. Anita Bryant, a mediocre singer and beauty queen who promoted Florida orange juice, it's always Florida, and Dan White, a former San Francisco police officer and firefighter who was elected to the San Francisco Board of Supervisors in the same election as Harvey Milk. Anita Bryant, whose singing career had stagnated in the 1960s, <laughs> publicly opposed a bill in Miami that would stop discrimination against queer people. She used anti-gay stereotypes and fear to argue against it, linking homosexuality, tell me if you've heard this one, to pedophilia and moral decline. LGBT activists criticized her for promoting discrimination and prejudice. Anita Bryant was then hired by fringe right-wing and religious groups to speak against this law. Her original Save the Children campaign portrayed gay people as dangerous threats to families, especially in schools. This resulted in affecting teachers, social workers, and others working in the public service. The campaign stoked widespread fear and homophobia and prejudice. Anita Bryant's words and actions fueled anti-gay feelings and spread harmful stereotypes about queer people. This led to queer professionals being fired, discriminated against in housing and family law, and public violence being encouraged against them. These invented conspiracies about queer people had a lasting impact on queer rights right across North America. Now, let's talk about the ex-cop. During his very brief tenure on the board of the San Francisco Supervisors, Dan White engaged in a series of disagreements, particularly with Mayor Moscone and with Supervisor Harvey Milk. He opposed many of their progressive policies, which included things like supporting the, house, supporting the homeless, public transportation, and specifically a drug rehab facility that was being set up in his district. For the record, harm reduction saves lives. After quitting a week prior 
and then asking for his job back, Dan White then snuck into the basement of the San Francisco City Hall and would go on to murder George Moscone and Harvey Milk, shooting them each six times and then four, before walking out the front door of his own volition. He turned himself in later that day. The violence that partially destroyed San Francisco after this is known as the White Knight Riots. Not only did queer people riot, but police then caused $100,000 in public property damage to gay bars in the Castro. This is Moscone and Harvey. Conservative and religious right groups have for decades used various tactics to undermine the progress of queer rights and visibility. This demonization aims to stigmatize and create discriminatory laws that restrict our fundamental human rights. Yeah. A year later, oh, here we go. <laughs> the Twinkie defense was Dan White's infinite defense. The idea that he had eaten too much sugary food which led to his mental inability to not kill two people in cold blood. He would receive seven years and eight months as a sentence for these murders and serve five. Anita Bryant never fully recovered her career after the backlash she faced against queer people. Despite the fact that she declared bankruptcy in 1997, she has continued to fight against queer rights to this day. Her granddaughter, Sarah Green, married a woman in 2021. <laughs> so what did the queer community learn from loss? This is my community. This is the first intergenerational pride float in 2024. I'm so proud of these people. I think Harvey understood what we were fighting for. A couple of months before he was killed, he said this. May we mourn the dead and fight like hell for the living. 